president shuffling his economic team and tapping Fed Vice Chair Lael Brainerd to head the National Economic Council and his top advisor on inflation. Joining us this morning to discuss, former Federal Reserve Vice Chair himself, now professor of economics at Princeton University, Alan Blinder. Alan, welcome back. Good to see you again. Good morning. Of course, author of A Monetary and Fiscal History of the United States. On, on Brainerd, Alan, I'm wondering, um, you know, the easy read right now is that her move basically removes a net dovish participant to the dots. Is that the most important thing? I think it is. I mean, in, in the fullness of time, her job at the NEC may prove more important. We don't know what's going to happen with that. The NEC is involved in many, many, many things, and she'll be good. So half of me is happy about that. But the other half of me is sad for the reason you just said. Uh, I think this is, this is a point in time where the Fed has some crucial decisions to make. And it's starting to divide along hawk dove lines, which has not been true for the last few years. There's been no reason for the Fed to be divided that way. But it's starting to get divided that way. And it seems clear that Lael was the leader of the dove faction, uh, and now she's going to leave. Uh, does any of the recent data, I'm thinking uh, the last payroll print and obviously retail sales today, uh, make you worry about maintaining any kind of dovish stance? It does. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I was extremely disappointed in the change in the seasonals. I had been talking about and writing about the very sharp decline in inflation during the year 2022. There still is a decline. But with, this, the, with the revisions in the seasonals, which rarely happens, um, that decline is not as dramatic as it was. And then you had jobs very strong, of course, and retail sales. So, yeah, there is reason to uh, rethink, I think, and I am rethinking the notion that we were uh, on a very nice glide path to a soft landing. Uh, it's less clear today than it was uh, two weeks ago. It's interesting, Alan, because as always, the the investor discussion around Fed policy swings a lot more dramatically than the Fed's own stated message about these things. I mean, if you look at it, they've been saying all along, look, we can't consider the job against inflation done. We expect the uh, the terminal rate to be above five percent and the market maybe doubted it in the face, you know, in the absence of, of persuasive economic data that were substantiating that. And now we're there. Um, and so I guess. Uh, perhaps, even though Brainerd may be, you know, leaving the, the board, uh, Chair Powell himself has not, for example, said, well, unemployment really has to start going up a lot before we consider ourselves to be at a place we want to be with the Fed funds rate. Yeah, I think the Fed has felt the need to show its teeth, to growl and snarl a bit, to try to get the markets in line, because they were getting way ahead of themselves. Uh, as they always do. I mean, this is not new. Markets are much more mercurial than the uh, Fed is. Maybe now that the markets are sort of coming in line with the Fed's projections, um, there'll be less of that snarling and growling. We'll see. Alan, you mentioned a, perhaps a, a, a growing division between uh, hawks and doves. How much does that matter? I mean, uh, versus where Powell is and and. Just what's the dynamic like in terms of why that would be something that's important to keep an eye on? The main reason it matters is the debate that goes on inside the chairman's head. The chairman, any chairman, that includes Powell and include previous chairman, even Greenspan going way, way back, looks around the room, figuratively speaking, and counts noses and looks at where the vote is. Now, if he doesn't like it, he can try to change it and push it in another direction or, in the limit, actually uh, push the committee to the side in another direction with dissents. Powell hasn't had many dissents to deal with since he's been chair, and they're, in general, fairly rare on the, uh, on the FOMC. But the, the main thing is a battle for Jay Powell's mind, uh, and Lael Brainerd was an influential part of that battle. And now she'll be gone. Of the important uh, questions at the moment, Alan, uh, before we let you go, um, any thoughts on where you think the terminal rate uh, should be? And uh, on the curve inversion, I think we, I think we might have gotten to 88 basis points. How, how relevant do you think that is right now in the context of conversations about recession? I don't worry so much about curve inversions. I think markets worry much, much too much about that. What they show you, of course, is the Fed is tightening. 
and the long end of the yield curve or the medium yen, whatever, depends which kind of inversion you're looking at, is, hasn't responded as much as the short end. That's very no, no, normal for that in general is very normal for a Fed tightening, and if there's enough of it, you get an inversion of the uh, of the yield curve.